Welcome to NREI's Common Area Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the award-winning editorial staff at NREIOnline.com. Let's jump right into this week's podcast. Hello and welcome to the Common Area with your host, David Bodemer. David, how are you? I'm doing well. Still um, day lost count of being uh, <laughs> working remotely in Brooklyn. <laughs> ah, yes. We're all kind of still doing that same thing. And it sounds to me like your guest is also working remotely and that's Cheryl, correct? That is correct. All right. Um, why don't you introduce the audience to Cheryl and why she's here on the show today? So today we brought on Cheryl Gray, who is the president of IROM. She's also the uh, head of special projects and operational excellence at Quad Real property group in Toronto. She's, and you know, we've had, um, brought her on in part because at NREI, we've had this great relationship with IRM over the years where they've been, uh, the the president writes a monthly column for us and just thought it would be great to, to have a, have a a conversation, you know, in general, but but specifically in the most recent column, Cheryl wrote about, you know, diversity inclusion and what that means right now, just given some of the conversation. So Cheryl, thank you for, for, for coming on. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, I think the best analogy I've heard about working from home and uh, how things are going, we've invented a new word and we call it blurs day now because we're never sure uh, what what day we're working from. It just all blends one into the other. So, uh, but thank you for having me. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. And as you said, we certainly at Iron value our relationship with you and uh, a great opportunity to chat with you today. So just for, you know, and, and, you know, I think most of our audience would be are familiar, but just, you know, for those who may not be, could you just for a second talk a bit about um, what IRAM does and um, even you know, also if you want to talk for a second about your company, because I believe you're the first uh, president of the association that's actually based in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. I uh, have been a member of IRAM through the Canadian membership uh, since 1990, um, but I have the honor of being the first president of IRAM from outside of the United States. And IRAM generally is serving, you know, the industry around real estate management. I mean, it's easier for real estate management, but like, could you just, some of the key areas and, and ways it serves the industry? Absolutely. Um, the Institute of Real Estate Management is really founded around education, for uh, real estate management professionals. And we were founded in 1933, actually in Chicago, but the mainstay of our institute is that we are a group of professionals. So individuals are our members, you know, constituting a professional association versus say a trade association. Um, So the mainstay is our certified property manager designation. Um, We also have several other accreditations that represent different areas within the real estate management community, such as accredited resident manager. Uh, We also even have uh, organizations which we will certify as accredited management organizations. Um, The joy of IRAM today uh, is that we are representing approximately 42 countries around the world, but Mm. We have very key active groups within Japan, China, South Korea, uh, and Africa. We've been a long relationship with Russia. And our longest standing one is, of course, Canada. We've had an association with IRAM where through the Real Estate Institute of Canada, we deliver the educational programs and uh, chapter engagement for our members. Uh, We do have about 20,000 members around the world. Um, We have some that are student members who are looking to gain the accreditation through our institute, but we also engage with many stakeholders who serve the real estate management profession uh, across the world. Thank you for for outlining all of that. Um, So, you know, right now we, we are talking at this very, I think, decisive moment, it, it seems like, where um, now, you know, just given the, the movement that, that's been happening on the streets has seemed to now be translating into conversations in, in, in all sorts of parts of society, including in, you know, among our industries. And it definitely, I don't think it's a, a big secret that commercial real estate has historically been um, 
an industry heavily dominated by white men. And now it seems like we're, you know, the stuff that we're publishing, the stuff that other groups are publishing, the stuff that I'm seeing being put out by groups like trade associations and even companies like I think you know, CBRE just announced that they are creating a chief diversity officer executive level position position for their company. So this does so it seems like we're actually, you know, maybe having this conversation in um a new way given the moment. And that was and it is the subject of the column that you most recently wrote for us. So I'm just kind of curious, you know, to see you know, what you make of what's happening and, and you know, and, and if you could talk about some of the points that, that you've raised in this column about how, how we can, how the, how the commercial, commercial real estate industry should be looking at this moment. Right. Well, I certainly, you know, wouldn't disagree with the comment that uh, the industry has been dominated um, in the past uh, quite strongly in in being white and male and you know interestingly enough many of the positions i held within the early days of my career happened to be the first woman who hold, who held that role mm -hmm. so we've come a long way i think in terms of gender but i think the key and the word that you've used frequently here is conversation i think what's different is we've been having conversations about underrepresented groups within the commercial real estate industry for some time. Mm -hmm. What feels different today is people want to stop talking and they want to start doing. And I think that is a really strong message that I'm hearing from the stakeholders and the players in the industry is we all as organizations, including our associations, have talked about diversity, have programs around diversity and inclusion. You know, IRAM certainly has had diversity advisory board. Um, our founda IRAM Foundation, you know, supports underrepresented students and scholarships. But what feels different now is that we want to start putting some of these conversations into action. Um, you know, for example, for us today, at IRAM, we've decided um, we are going to engage with a diversity expert, and we're also going to have our diversity board strongly um, part of that initiative, but more importantly, informing our board. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about what we do as an association, but we're also looking at our own uh, practices within the association itself. So we as an entity from a corporate standpoint also want to make sure that we're doing things that have sustainable meaning and, and will invoke appropriate change. And I think that's what's different, especially for the real estate industry, that we realize we still have a long way to go when it comes to those underrepresented groups. And how do we overcome that is needs more than just dialogue, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And, and in terms of like what that looks like, then is that, you know, how, 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 like, how structurally, what does that mean for companies? Does it mean creating positions? Like, how do we, how does it move from beyond um, talk about recruitment to, you know, cult, actually cultivating and, and putting in people in position to succeed and thrive and, and making sure that, you know, people are not being, you know, missing out on opportunities and all those sorts of things. Right. I think the best analogy that I could give you to that would be uh, a group that I've been familiar with the last couple of years out of Australia called Male Champions of Change. And this is uh, an industry-wide uh, initiative, not only within real estate in Australia, but also covers a variety of industries. And the rather than women, it was about gender equality, rather than women trying to help women uh, move up, the recognition was that if the C-suite, which is typically male dominated, is not part of that and is really actively engaging in making sure that there's meaningful effort, whether it's pay equity or promotions, um, that its likelihood of success would be limited. They started with I think it was eight CEOs when the program launched in 2010 and you know there's over 30 participating and it will be interesting to see if you take that and stretch it out and include diversity not just gender equality and that kind of a dialogue that we couldn't do something similar here in the North American market and 
when I look at all of the communication that has come out from various real estate firms of, of global scale, that I think there's an opportunity for us to engage those C-suites and as an industry, but also as an association being the IRM president, that we can help advance those conversations. The power of our collaboration with so many other associations um, through IRAM and NAA and many others, uh, we have a large work group that is about 35 related associations all around real estate. And you think of all the different facets of real estate, there's development, there's construction, there's architecture, uh, there's property management, there's leasing. We intend to try and use those opportunities where we speak with others and collaborate with others so that we aren't working in silos. And that will be the power of what I think we can bring as an influencer, as an association, and couple that with the energy and the dialogue coming from the C-suite from many of the firms. I know what I'm hearing is we want to do things. The how part, I don't believe we've all got the answers for. But the fact that everyone is listening with intent to create action around this was something that to me was a powerful statement because it really feels as if the dialogue that's going on generally now is, is only the precursor to what action could come. Yeah, I think the way that I've heard some people sort of wrestling with is like hoping that this isn't, this isn't just a moment, but actually a movement where we, you know, see the change is affected and not just, you know, have this be a period of heightened, you know, where we pay attention to it for a little bit and then kind of just like fade back into the way. Right. Just, you know. right. Um, I think one of the um, important points you also make in your, in the article you wrote is that this isn't also just simply about, you know, a moral argument around, you know, we need to diversify just to make, you know, people feel better, but that actually divert, you know, there's, there are now a lot of, there's a lot of concrete evidence and studies that point to diverse teams being more um, successful and more productive. So this is, this is both, you know, about giving underrepresented communities opportunities, but it's also good for companies to be doing this and industries. Absolutely. The, you know, there, there has been enough Um, study done on it that um, there's certainly proof that the more diverse a group whether it's from your board level or your employee group that you you have better outcomes and I think you know the question that I would ask myself is that you know for you know you've heard people say you know if the answer to everything you do is yes and everyone's like-minded it doesn't move you forward too uh, too much and there's a lot of voices at the table and you know, you think of, of uh, you know, as a woman, I've been told, you know, you need to lean in, you need to be part of the conversation, um, which gives you the impression that, you know, we weren't welcome at the table, we weren't feeling welcome at the table. And diversity and inclusion, which is the key word inclusion, is everybody needs to feel welcome and to be at the table and and have a voice. And that's where the opportunity, I think, is to be more innovative, creative, and and ultimately improve the bottom line. The difference is we need to make sure we have an organization, whatever that happens to be, um, actually embraces that diversity and inclusion and and does positive outreach to ensure that those things occur. You have to embed that in the way that you do business. And it has to be more than just having, say, uh, you know, a diversity policy or, you know, a non-discrimination policy, whatever you may call it. The, the challenge I believe that we have at this point before us that has a lot of energy and attention is that clearly, even with all of these things in, in the majority of businesses, even outside of real estate, it hasn't been enough. And that's the part that I think everyone's recognizing is we need to, we need to make sure that intentional or not, whatever is systemically broken within the infrastructure of of the organization or society um, needs to be considered in a different way. And and I think the final thing I would say on that is that I don't know that there's going to be any one right answer, um, but I think the 
beginnings of what we're seeing is it's it's almost like okay this is enough we now we now need to stop doing whatever it is we're doing because clearly something is broken and uh it needs to be fixed and and that energy i believe is what we're starting to see uh come from so many groups another thing that i've been trying to grapple with and i'm not sure if if well i mean i'll just ask the question you know we'll see but you know, another thing I'm thinking about is that real estate at the end of the day is also, you know, so we're, at, one, at one point we're talking about bringing people into the industry and then putting people in positions where they, you know, they are included and then also, you know, can advance and thrive into positions of leadership at companies. The other side of this that I'm thinking about just, you know, as a re real estate industry is the, the deals themselves and access to capital and access to debt and equity. And is there also... Do there also have to be efforts to make sure that investor groups or developers that are run that are you know that are women owned or owned by people of color have better access to deals and in, in, in order to tell is, is that also a part of the the, the the challenge here well i think i come from the property management industry which you know is is not really the money side of the business. You know, we're we're not usually the transaction. Asset management is is you know an aspect of real estate management, but if you think of typical property management, usually we're given the care of the assets. And and what I would say from that perspective, which is really the space I played in for forty years, is that there are equal opportunities. The challenge is it's not a career of choice. It is typically a career of chance. Mm. And we've had a lot of dialogue around that with, with our sister organizations in uh, real estate to talk about how do we overcome that? Because most of us who are in this space are in it because we met someone by chance who introduced us and we went, wow, this is a great career, I love it. Um, our, we need to spend more time, I think, reaching into high school communities. We had a big meeting uh, earlier this year when we could all meet in person. It was early February uh, with a number of other associations and talked about how do we create an awareness because for us as an industry, uh, apart from uh, diversity in, in the truest sense of ethnicity, et cetera, we're an aging demographic. And, you know, there's a real challenge in bringing the next gen into the into our ranks but it's creating that awareness and a lot of times what we're finding is if people make choices um, once they get to college we're not always uh, at the top of the list because of lack of awareness you know we're starting to think about can we get into the high schools the reason the high schools will be so important to us is when you think about even today when we're looking at the challenges that real estate is facing with the impacts of COVID-19, you know, it is an industry that has pretty consistent employment, whether the building is half full or completely full, there's always a need for property managers. And more importantly, usually in the times of crisis, you need us even more, we become more essential. So the career opportunities for an individual who before they're making that college choice is an opportunity for us as an institute to make them aware of the education uh, that we can provide them, the um, career paths that they have, and the fact that you know buildings will exist. We all need places to live, to work, to shop. That isn't going to go away. So for me, that relates to the fact that we have an opportunity right at that level to attract a very diverse group rather than relying on the historic bringing up through the ranks where we aren't as diverse as we probably could be. So it ties together for a bunch of reasons in my mind that we were already doing some things that will help us get to the diversity answer better. But at the same time, we're in an existing space with existing players. How do we make sure that we support as an institute, but also even me as a practitioner, that we support those that are underrepresented and have an opportunity to get into the business or more importantly advance in the business so you also mentioned you know that throughout your own career that you've 
often been the first woman to hold, you know, various positions as, as you've advanced. And so what has that experience kind of brought to how you talk to other people, you know, other women or, you know, other, other folks who are trying to advance, like how, how, how can you, how have you been able to, you know, take the challenges and, and the successes and, and use that to help other people? I think there's a number of ways anyone can do it. But for me personally, advocating for those that are following has been a big part of my career where you can see potential in individuals that perhaps isn't as obvious to others. And especially in in my case for women, it was you know, in, in the 80s, when I started in the business, I, I used the story that I took over a very difficult role in managing an office complex where three buildings existed and a fourth was under construction. And needless to say, the three buildings that were occupied, the tenants were not very happy. It was a very high uh, demand, difficult role to manage that. And walked into the construction meeting after the first week I had started and I was assumed to be the secretary, not the manager. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you, you have to roll with the punches a little bit in order to, to keep moving forward. But, um, you know, property management, uh, you know, requires tenacity in the best of us. And, and I've been very fortunate to see many great women who have um, succeeded and, you know, and are now in C-suites that you wouldn't have seen, say, 15 or 20 years ago. The, the challenge we have is making sure we give all stakeholders that kind of advocacy and that kind of opportunity. And, you know, even for ourselves, I mean, I, I'll point to a personal decision that I'm fortunate enough, uh, you know, met uh, a great um, young member at one of our regional meetings uh, who's now on our board. And, you know, I think taking and seeing potential in someone and bringing them into a potential leadership role where they have an opportunity to work with us. It's been a great success story. And I think more importantly, um, it's allowed us to have a diverse opinion. You know, it's not people like us, uh, you know, who might be 30 or 40 years in the business, who's, you know, maybe only been in the business a few years. And you need to have the courage and, and, invest yourself in those kinds of, um, I don't know, I call them the unsung heroes because sometimes it's, it's good to be able to see those, you know, and, and think about that, but to stretch outside your circles mm -hmm. and bring others in, um, isn't something that's always easily embraced. You need to have a little bit of uh, a courage to do that. And you need to be able to support that person and not just bring them in and hope that they're going to manage. Thank you so much for answering all these questions. I really hope that people can look at the piece on our site as well as go to Iram's website and be aware of, of all these efforts as, as they're taking place. Yeah, we do. We do have a section on our website about diversity. I mean, I think, you know, clearly for all of us, not just not just Iram, but I think for all of us, you know, we don't have all the answers. I think everyone is making really good um, time to ask the questions and get actionable items out of it. Um, I, do, I don't think the conversation is going to uh, subside with time. I think there's, it feels different this time and everything around real estate has really started to focus on people. If I had to say anything, you know, it's not just about bricks and mortar. Retail is now about the experience, you know, employee and occupant wellness has come into how we manage buildings today. We're more conscious of people's experience. You know, we're moving more in some cases where we're not in a need to rent society. We're in a want to rent society. So multifamily is, has got more about, people and that's the fun part of what we do every day and I think this is just another aspect to how the industry itself is going to move itself forward in the future that's all very that all sounds promising and hopefully we, we continue to move in this in this direction 
I'm just going to, you know, add from NREI's perspective, we also are trying to evaluate, you know, how as a platform and how, you know, as, as a platform that gives people to, uh, a, a voice and as a news organization covering the industry, how, you know, assessing how we can be doing a better job too. So, yeah. you know, for if Iram has, has uh, suggestions for us or if any of the listeners do, we are we are actively listening and, you know, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, that we're engaged as well. Yeah, agreed. All right, David and Cheryl, thank you so much. This has been a fantastic podcast. I love, David, how you put it. We are open to the conversation. We're listening, and we want to you know, make sure that this conversation continues. Cheryl, you mentioned you have resources on your website. Uh, could you please give the address to that and, and how people can get a hold of it? Yes, if they go to irum.org, we do have a dedicated page on diversity. Uh, we also have our contact for our diversity board chair, and we would certainly welcome anyone to check out the information there. And if they have an inquiry, they can contact us through that website. That is perfect. Cheryl, thank you so much for being a fantastic guest today. Thank you. I appreciated the opportunity to talk to you. David, thank you for bringing her on. You picked great. <laughs> We're doing our best to make sure we have the, you know, bring in, bringing the most important voices to, to, the, to our audience. Absolutely. Absolutely. And of course, the last Thank you goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you for listening and tuning in to the Common Area Podcast with David Bodemer. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when David comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your colleagues. Again, thank you for listening today. For everyone at NREI, this is Eric Johnson inviting you back in two weeks for all the stories that matter to you. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Common Area Podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of NREI or Informa. The content has been made available for information and educational purposes only.